Well, it was certainly nice to be here last night. Wasn't it a wonderful service? Oh, my goodness. I thought it was just great. And uh, to be back here today. And uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to try this song. <laughs> you know, I'm always kind of amazed when I read the story in Numbers about the children of Israel. And uh, God did so much for them. But they forgot it so easily. And you would read where they would then realize their, their uh, need and they would come back to the Lord. And then in the next verse you would say, and again, the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. But I wonder sometimes, uh, you know, David in the Psalms, he said he had to encourage himself in the Lord. And... Uh, with everything that God did for them, he gave them manna, he opened the sea and let them cross on dry land, he gave them manna, he gave them water, uh, everything he did, but when it came time to get to the promised land and take the promised land, and Moses sent the spies, sent ten spies, eight of the ten said, we can't do it. After all they'd seen God do, after all they had seen God do. Oh no, we can't take that land. There's giants there. Uh-uh. Yeah, it's a beautiful land. It flows with milk and honey. But no, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. But aren't you glad for the remnant? Two of them trusted God. Caleb and Joshua. Dennis sometimes says he wants to be like Caleb. He wants to be as strong and going in his latter years as he did in his younger and so far he's doing pretty good he's been gone more from home than uh, almost than he's been home but I I just want to encourage you today sometimes we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord we have to look back and see what God has done for us the times that he's been faithful to us so as I sing this song you just remember that whatever if you have a need today and it may look impossible we serve a God where nothing is impossible for him. So go ahead, Dennis. Just a little bit. Uh, God gave a bold command To cross the Jordan and claim the land Not to worry about the giants they would face Oh, but when the spies returned To tell the others what they had learned Well, they said for us to win There's just no way Still two of them trusted God Caleb and Joshua Oh, they said children don't believe what you have heard. Now we know we're outmanned by far. They're much bigger than we are. Oh, but let's not forget the God who we serve. With all the many miracles, why don't you think it's possible With all the many things we've seen Why do you think it's just a dream With all the things he's done for us Don't you think it's time we trust Remember what is possible With all the many miracles like when we were about to die Oh, manna fell from the sky And then water came from a dry old dusty rock And back when Pharaoh was closing in Our God shut the sea again Oh, but not before we all had safely crossed. So here you are, my friend. 
You face a battle you cannot win And you tell yourself there's just no need to try Oh, consider how good God's been He's been faithful time and again Oh, you must believe And here's the reason why With all the many miracles Why don't you think it's possible With all the many things we've seen Why do you think it's just a dream with all the things he's done for us don't you think it's time we trust remember what is possible with all the many miracles with all the things he's done for us don't you think it's time we trust Remember what is possible with all the many miracles. Keep trusting him, church. He's faithful. Always faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, what a joy to be here again today and uh, to share God's word with you. I'm, uh, I'm really blessed. I'm excited and blessed to be with uh, David and Pearl Lawson this morning I, or this afternoon. I was so hoping we'd get to see you. Uh, this has been a very rushed trip and uh, full of a full schedule, but I was hoping. And thank you, Dave, for bringing them out tonight and, uh, and uh, allowing us to see them. These folks are along with Jimmy McLaughlin and his wife, are uh, your legends to me, yeah. for me. What you have done and your evangelism, and I know that sometimes you don't like to be talked about, but these guys have done a great job. Street witnessing, street ministry, preserving churches, opening churches, buying churches, building churches. What a history. What a history. And it's, a, it's an honor for me to be uh, connected with them and, and be working with them and Andrew and the vision that they have. Vanny, you want to say something? Yeah, plus, when we arrived in Scotland to begin our time here, uh, we went straight from the airport to Pearl and David's house, and they took us in for quite a long while, <laughs> and uh, took care of us until we got settled. Yeah, I, yeah. I love these folks, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's really, uh, it's really an honor to be here, and, and to see what you're doing here, what you folks want to do in this community of Bargetti. You're to be commended for that. And um, I pray, and I'm going to be praying with you, that this will continue and uh, it will grow. It will have an impact. I'm so, uh, I'm so thrilled to see uh, Zuriel uh, 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 Thomas leading worship and to see how the, the cultures can blend and how you are acceptable. People that were here last night are acceptable, accepting them and they are accepting of you, and it just, I mean, what, an, what a testimony it has for this community. Because there are people of all nationalities here, and there's going to be people of all nationalities in heaven, too. Uh, so, uh, you know, just to see how God is bringing everything together, and what a vision uh, to keep a ministry open here and providing hope uh, for people in this area. And uh, I understand that we're going to be in Colt Bridge tonight uh, doing uh, ministry. Uh, and and uh, there's another church we was talking about, Glen Boyd. And uh, we're interested in seeing that church restored and kept going and, and growing stronger. So, you know, we're going to be praying for you wherever we travel. And we'll be telling the story. I take a lot of pictures. I'm a Facebook king. I don't know how many of you are on Facebook. But I'm a Facebook king. I put a picture on everything uh, about what we do. And uh, I'm not afraid to ask people to help support financially. And I'm not afraid to ask people to pray. And, uh, because I believe that it's a worthwhile investment in the kingdom of God. And on that note, I want you to know last night some of you were here. And I talked about the well in Lome Togo. 
uh, we've raised, uh, after last night, there's about 200 pounds came in last night for the well in uh, Lomé, another 300 pounds this morning. So we're well on the way. Almost uh, over 500 pounds have come in to help us dig that well in a village outside of Lomé, Togo. So keep praying for us on that. We'll see that done. Hopefully we'll have pictures and a report coming uh, sometime after the first of the year once we can get it scheduled to, to drill and, uh, and get water flowing in that school. We'll get some benches built for the school. We'll show you pictures of a school full of kids and uh, them getting water from a tap, not having to walk a mile to bring water uh, back to the uh, school. So let me, uh, I know we don't, you go about an hour here, I was told. So sometimes these Americans, you know, we get a little sidetracked and get turned around. So I'll try to keep it to an hour. But I want to talk to you about tomorrow, uh, uh, thinking about tomorrow. Uh, and that's a lot of us at our age, we think about tomorrow. We think about, you know, yesterday, yesterday's too. I come across a real philosoph- philosophical moment the other day. I don't know what brought it on. I was sitting and talking to someone, and I just happened to think, as I watched my clock, I watched this watch, and I watched that minute hand go around, you know, it just takes forever for that second hand to kick off, click off, 60 seconds. You just sit there and look at it, and you, Okay, two, uh, three. It just takes forever for that second hand to go around. But then you stop and think, it just took that long for 60 years to go by. Hmm? It takes a long time for 60 seconds. It takes no time for 60 years. That's a, that's a, that's a thought. For, I mean, that, I don't know what that does to you, but it just makes me think about you know, how time is how we're limited in time. Robert Schuller, some of you may know Robert Schuller, read some of his books. He was traveling, and uh, one of his staff uh, uh, members, uh, Mike Nassen, was with him, and uh, they were studying the itinerary, and, and his assistant gave the itinerary for the next uh, uh, day to uh, Schuller. And as Schuller read through it, he read through it, and then he, he finished reading the page, and he took it, and he he kind of uh, wadded it up and put it in the back of the airplane seat that they were in. And uh, his associate, Mike, uh, Mike Saxon, immediately reached down for the schedule and, and pulled it back. And he looked at Brother Schuler, Mr. Schuler, and he says, Brother Schuler, that's tomorrow's page. Whatever you do, don't throw away tomorrow. And... Uh, it's, uh, it's interesting when we think about how our schedules go. I'm going to talk to you about uh, tomorrow for some people, uh, starting with Joshua. Vanna mentioned these children of the Israelites when they come to the promised land. If you want to follow along with me, I'm not going to go into, I, I have several verses of scripture I'm going to read, but we all know the story, so I'm not going to try to repeat the entire story, but the story begins in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. That's where the story begins. Uh, and uh, then we're going to take it along through Joshua chapter 3. And, uh, and then we may go a, a, a little bit further. But it's the story of the Israelites coming to the edge of the promised land for the second time. And it's the second time. So in Joshua chapter 1... It begins with verse 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan into the land that I have about to give you. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river to the Euphrates. Verse 5, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Verse 6, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. Now if you go down to Joshua chapter 3, Joshua chapter 3. Verses 1 through 5. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to Jordan. 
where they camped before crossing the river. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless the reading of your word. Open our hearts, God. May there be inspiration and encouragement found in these words tonight. We just ask that you would bless us. Thank you, Lord, with your presence. Amen. Amen. In this story, the promise made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is about to be fulfilled again. God is preparing a new generation, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, for them to enter into their future. This is the, across the Jordan River was their future. Tomorrow, Tomorrow, as Joshua is talking to them, as the people went through and said, tomorrow you will enter into your future. Tomorrow the future begins. A new land, a new life, a new future. When I, when I was writing this and thinking about this terminology, time, tomorrow, how many of you have ever saw the little play about the orphans, uh, Annie? Uh, there's a little drama musical put on about Annie. You remember the, uh, you remember the song that she sings, the, the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there will be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none. When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, I stick out my chin and grin and say the sun will come out tomorrow. So you got to hang on till tomorrow. Come what may, tomorrow, tomorrow. I love you tomorrow. You're always a day away. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I love you tomorrow. You're always a day away. In the Bible, we are told not to boast about tomorrow. But we are also told not to fear tomorrow. Sometimes people miss their tomorrows because of fear. They throw away the future that God has prepared for them because of fear. To me, tomorrow speaks of the future, the possibility for change. I'm an I'm a optimist. I always look forward to something better. I always hope for something better. Uh, 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 new opportunities, uh, new life, new beginnings. When I make mistakes, I like to think tomorrow I can do better. I can recover from the mistake and I won't have to live in the error that I had made. I like to be positive. If yesterday was bad, anybody ever had one of those days? And today was worse, anyone ever had one of those days? Then I want to believe tomorrow is going to be better. Okay, if yesterday was bad, today was worse, then for me, tomorrow's got to be better. Okay, I'm going to look for tomorrow. I'm going to hang on to tomorrow. I'm going to hang on that tomorrow will be uh, 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 better. If I couldn't pay a bill today, and there's been a lot of those. If I couldn't pay a bill yesterday, if I couldn't pay a bill today, if I received another bill that I couldn't pay, I will not lose hope. I will not lose hope. I expect God to provide for tomorrow. I expect there to be provisions. Tomorrow offers hope. I envy people in other cultures who are not bound uh, in linear timelines. If something is not completed yesterday and still not finished today, well, there's always tomorrow. Any of you speak Spanish? Hmm? Mañana. What does mañana mean? Tomorrow. In Lingala, it's Lobi. Tomorrow. You know, if we don't get all the wall built today, lobby. Manana, we'll do it tomorrow. You know, I had an African friend from Ghana one time, and I was telling him, we've got to hurry, we've got to be at this certain place. He looked at me and just shook his head. He said, Dennis, you white people, you've got the watch, but you've got to remember us Africans, we got the time. <laughs> hmm? 
That's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing to remember. I wish I could be like that. I sat in an African wedding one day. We, was, we were late getting there. The groom come in two hours late. The bride was four and a half hours late. Time meant nothing. Yeah, they'll get it, but they'll get it done. But some people, some people give up and they miss their future. And they miss their tomorrow. The Bible tells us not to worry about tomorrow. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now I want you to understand, and I'm going to go back to this story. These Israelites had come to this place before. You remember, it's almost in the exact same place. They'd come to that river, they was on the edge of the promised land, and in the song Ben is saying, they sent out 12 spies. Ten of them came back with a negative report. Two of them said we can take the land, but sadly, the people listened to the ten. We want to go back. We got to go back. It was better. Yesterday was better. Yesterday we had food. We want to go back to yesterday. And they lost their tomorrow, and they went out and they wandered for another 40 years, almost in a circle. Almost in a circle. And after that generation had passed, they came back almost to the same spot. People allow fear, fear of the unknown, fear of the future to rob them of what God has planned for them. We get worried about how we're going to pay the bills. We get worried, we, we worry about how we're going to accomplish something. Sometimes uh, fellowships, groups of people, believers, will, will miss God because they worry about what God might not do what God might not do. Maybe it won't happen that way. They don't have a clear vision of what God wants to do. But in the Bible, Paul tells us, in writing to a, one of his young pastors, Timothy, in the first chapter of the second uh, letter, verse 7, he says, For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Fear does not come from God. Fear of the future does not come from God. Fear of tomorrow does not come from God. Those who throw away their tomorrow and the plans God has for them, because there are some that throw it away because of past events and shame. Inferiority, insecurity, low self-esteem, and regret. Deny them hope of the future tomorrow. There are many people like that. You see, they think about suicide. We were so amazed in Belgium when we lived in Belgium. We had, we had a man next door to live with us. And we'd go out and talk to him. But he had a petition into the king. Uh, yeah, it was a king of Belgium at that time. He had a petition into the king to allow him to commit suicide. He wanted to end his life. He had no hope. No hope for tomorrow. We find that in Scotland when we first arrived up in Nairn back in the 2009. I think there was a suicide every single week in that little village up in Nairn. Every single week there was someone killing themselves because they just had no, 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 no hope. There was inferiority. There was shame of past events. Now, I've done some pretty bad things in my life before Jesus Christ come into my life. I've still made mistakes even after Jesus became the Lord of my life. But before Jesus, I made some pretty terrible mistakes. I don't need to list them. I don't need to go over them. I don't need to, you know, tell you how bad. I just, they were bad. But I cannot look back on those bad events and allow them to keep me from accomplishing or doing what God wants me to do. You know, sometimes in your schools in America, they have these uh, little quotations for each person who's gone through the school, like the one who's uh, most likely to succeed, the one who's going to be a beauty king, the one who's going to be a beauty queen, the one who's going to be a president of the company. Uh, you know, they have all those sayings. They kind of describe what the person's going to be for the future. Well, Dennis Tanner was always the one that wasn't going to succeed. He wasn't going to make it. That's, there, was just, there were just things in my life. And those things could have, you know, I could allow them to, to hinder me, to keep me from seeing what God has for me. 
In 1 Peter, uh, the apostle writes, for you know, 1 Peter 1, verse 18, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. When God redeemed me, he paid a valuable price for Dennis Tanner. No matter what my life was like, no matter what I had done, God paid a valuable price for me. I was worth something to God. And it's sad today to see people who do not think they are worth anything to God. It's even sadder to see sometimes older people, seniors, who feel like their time is finished. That they don't have anything they can do anymore. My, my hero is David Lawson. When I look at David Lawson, how old he is, he's still doing things. I mean, just a few months ago, or, uh, you know, I guess it maybe has been more than a few months, but maybe a year or so ago, he's out on the streets playing his guitar, still doing evangelism on the streets. I see something like, I want to keep on going. I, Vanna, I want to be a Caleb. I want to be a Caleb. And, and I, I want to find something to do. Uh, I want to be a value. Uh, 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 now I can't hear I'm, I'm losing my hearing Okay, I, I had to have my knees replaced I got a shoulder replaced uh, sometimes on my mind I forget things uh, but as long as I can hear a little bit and as long as my mind works as long as I got Vanna with me I call her she's my mind Okay, uh, if I leave her at home I leave my mind at home <laughs> but, but I want to keep on going I want to I be valuable I don't want to give up I don't want to quit. As long as I can contribute, I can't stand to sit in a pew and not do something and not say something in a pew or a seat. I told the church one time when I was talking to a group of pastors, they were worried about people leaving and, and uh, going to another church. And I said, well, sometimes you got people, they sit in the church, they don't do nothing, they don't say nothing, they never pray, they never testify, and then they're going to go to another church. I said, what are they going to do in another church? They're going to sit there. They're not going to pray. They're not going to do anything. You know, they just, you know. Come on, we, we, we're more than that. And we're more valuable than that. We're valuable to God. We must never sit back and say that my time is finished. Our time is finished when we're laying in that bed or we're walking down the street and God takes us home. Then our time is finished. But until then... He's left us here to do, to do something, to do a work. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, <coughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and many of you know these verses. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting people's sins against them. Our past cannot be held against us. I told you last night about Carlos. Some of you were here. Carlos was in a, a, a young man that was in a church that I was involved in. His mother was a prostitute. We used to go into the house on Sunday mornings and dress him. Get him ready for church. Nine years old. But he was a terror. He, he, he stole from us. He would lie. He was mean. But we had him in church. We'd get him among those group of other kids. We'd take him and we'd play football. We'd play ball with him. We'd do sports. We'd take him places. We taught them the word of God. And we loved them. And Carlos just continued on that bad road. He ended up in prison. Accused of manslaughter, killing a person. Finally got out of prison in his, in his early 50s and was driving on a road in Oklahoma and had a terrible accident. And at the time of the accident, there was a chaplain who was praying. He was also an emergency worker, uh, one, like an ambulance or an EMT, uh, what do you call them, emergency technicians. And and he, on the radio, he heard about this terrible accident, and he felt led of God to go to that accident. And when he got there, he saw nothing but body bags of people that were in the other car, the people that was in the car with Carlos, all of them, they were all in body bags. And the 
other emergency workers said they're all dead. And this man walked among the body bags, and as he was walking among them, he said he felt an impression of God to check. And he says, open this one, I want to check it. And when he opened it, he reached down and he felt a pulse. And he says, this one's still alive. Get him out, get him in the ambulance, get him to the hospital. They got him to the hospital, they worked on him. This man come to visit Carlos, took Carlos into his home and nurtured Carlos back, ministered to him, prayed with him. And today, that young nine-year-old boy that was a terror, thief, mean as all get out, spent time in prison, was set in a church service. And I can see Carlos sitting back there praying and worshiping God. And he'll tell me, he says, Dennis, if it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't for the grace of God. And when I look at Carlos, you know, some people say, well, Carlos, he deserved everything he got. Carlos should have been in prison. Carlos should have died that day. He deserved everything he got. But God didn't hold that against him. In God's grace, every one of us have had God's grace, right? And in God's mercy, and every one of us have experienced God's mercy, Carlos was spared. And today, Carlos is serving God. He loves God. And out of all of those kids that came, now some of his aunts and uncles, see, they were all babies when I was there. But I, I, they are still in that church. And I'll go in that church, and there's Chiquita, and there's Teresa, and, and there's another one over there, and there sits Carlos, the meanest of the bunch. And he's sitting there worshiping God with the rest of us. That's the mercy of God. We cannot allow. Christ does not hold our sins against us. He does not count sins against those who believe. He has committed us to the, to the message of reconciliation. Verse 20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. God makes his appeal through you. Look at what I've done in this person's life. That's what I can do in other pers- people's lives. And then Paul goes on to say, we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God because God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We never want to stop living in the hope of tomorrow. Tomorrow holds all the potential, all the, all the uh, uh, potentials that today has lost. Think about that. Tomorrow holds all the potentials that today has lost. Tomorrow is hope. Tomorrow is hope. One might say that the ancestors of this new generation, Joshua's people, the the people Joshua brought to the Jordan, their ancestors, their ancestors, they they gave up uh, uh, their, their promise of tomorrow. They were 40 years ago. 40 years ago was their yesterday. 40 years ago. They they wandered for 40 years. And then they all died and Joshua brought them back. They looked back and they glorified the past. They looked at yesterday as being better. Their today was listening to the report of the eight spies. They were too small. They were too weak. In their own words, they spoke of how they considered themselves like grasshoppers. They looked at their today and it took away their tomorrow. They threw away their tomorrow to live in yesterday as slaves. Think about it. How some people will throw away, how some people will throw away their future because of fear, because of guilt, because of low self-esteem. They give up and they lose hope about Tomorrow. God was speaking to the Israelites about their tomorrow. Put away the past. Get ready for the future. Trust God. You know, that's a big thing for us today. You know, there's a lot in many of our churches, there's a lot of talk about faith, especially in Pentecostal churches. We talk about faith and spoken faith and how we walk in faith. And, and there's, there's a lot to be said about trusting God. Sometimes we walk, and I don't know that it's bad, that we walk in blind faith because we can't see God. We can't see what God's going to do. 
But it's all right to say, I've got hope in tomorrow. I can't see tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I trust God that it's going to be better than today. It's going to be better than yesterday. And sure enough, God did. He led them across the Jordan River. And it was at flood stage. Now, you've got to understand it. It wasn't just a, a, a little flooded plain that they were going to walk across. This was a roaring river. And Joshua had to lead them across. God said we can go across that river. You sure God said it, Joshua? I'm sure God said it. You're going to go across that river. We're going to take the land. We're going to take the city. How are we going to do it? Well, God's going to give it to us. Now listen to what Joshua is saying. Tomorrow, we're going to walk across the river. How are we going to take the city, Joshua? Well, we're going to walk around it seven times. We're going to shot and the walls are going to fall down. You sure, Joshua? Yeah, that's what God said. Tomorrow, we're going to cross that river. And we're going to walk around this city seven times. We'll shout and the walls will come down. Okay, Joshua. You see the faith to believe. And how would you like to have been the priest carrying the ark? Hmm? Yeah? You'd like to be the priest carrying the ark. You can't swim. They didn't swim back there. They didn't have beaches or stuff. They went to, you know. So I got this ark. I don't know what it weighs. It's got gold. It's got stuff in it, you know. And I, I'm one of the guys that sat on my shoulder, and somehow I got elected to be the front guy. So I'm there, and, then, and Joshua comes up and says, Now, Dennis, don't worry. Just as soon as your feet go in that water, the water's going to dry up. And I'm looking at that water, and I got this heavy ark on my hand, and I got to put my foot up here. And I say, You sure, Joshua? I'm sure, Dennis. Well, why don't you do it first, Joshua? No, God said, You do it, Dennis. Put your foot in the water. You see the faith. Because tomorrow, we're going to cross the river. Tomorrow, the land is ours. Don't be afraid, Dennis. Don't hesitate. But the last time we were here, we went back. Now, don't worry about yesterday. Just go look for tomorrow. Look for tomorrow. And then God told them before he took them across, he said, be consecrated. Be consecrated. Consecrate yourselves to the Lord. The idea of consecration is to be separated to be dedicated, thoroughly committed, set apart. And, and uh, that's difficult. That's challenging today. Because we get on the verge of legalism. And, and we get on the verge of setting, setting laws against people. You know, you know what I, I found was interesting? I just heard this last week, and I'll, I'll wrap this up. Just give me another five minutes. I was with a German teaching in Lome, a German professor. And uh, as we were teaching, uh, he was teaching on faith, a uh, uh, doctrinal book on faith, and I was teaching uh, on uh, uh, the New Testament. And we were talking one evening, and he said, in Germany, they have just passed a law that if you are caught driving with one beer, they haven't drinking one bottle, one 12 ounce, 16 ounce, whatever it is, of beer you will lose your driver's license and be taken to jail or, or how, how, whatever punishment it is. I found that interesting. That for some reason, we who do not drink alcohol or we who look at alcohol askance as not being good for our health, that we have always said that alcohol influences the mind, has an impact on the mind, it is not good, it's not healthy, and we've always been on the outskirts talking about alcohol. And I'm not going to get into the issue of drinking or not drinking, but I'm just giving you an illustration here. The German government has finally come to the realization that a few ounces of alcohol can mess with a person's mind. Now, isn't that interesting? Some of us have been saying that for years, that alcohol can mess with your mind. And we've been laughed at. No, no, it's good for your health. No, no, it's good for this. No, no, it's all right. No, no, a little bit won't hurt you. Well... The German government's come up with a different opinion. A little bit will hurt you. A little bit does impact you. So, so without getting into legalism or without saying whether, you know, what about alcohol or wine or whatever, this part of the scripture says separate ourselves unto God. And separation has always been a very touchy subject in Christianity. 
because it verges on, 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 uh, on, on legalism. But when we look at the world today, friends, there is time when the church needs to separate itself from the world. We got churches that uh, are ordaining homosexuals. Yes. We got churches that are doing that. We got groups of religious bodies. I told I told the African church when I was teaching. We've actually got churches in America that are made up completely of homosexuals, transsexuals, and they call themselves Christians. They call themselves followers of Christ. There comes a time when we got to say, you know, we got we got to take ourselves and say, no, that is not right. That is not biblical. We are living in a world where people diminish the value of relationships and commitment. There's no longer commitments. Moral values and living like Jesus are taking a back seat to current trends, cultural trends, political manipulations, and determined liberal focus of destroying the family union as God established it. That's original from Dennis Tanner. <laughs> That's why I see happening in the world today. We, we no longer have an emphasis on relationships. We no longer have an emphasis on commitment. We see what's happening to marriages and to the family. How are we going to change that? The church has failed. We don't change it through laws. We don't change it through government propositions. We don't change it through protest march. That's not how we change things. We change it through leading people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they accept Christ, God through His Holy Spirit changes them. But if we are not winning people to Christ, if we are not leading people to Christ, we're not changing the world. It's only through Christ that this world can be changed, that culture can be changed, and that lives can be changed. After consecrating themselves to God, the people were allowed to follow the ark and they crossed over into the river, into the promised land, and they received their tomorrow. They received their tomorrow. They took the land without a weapon. They, took, uh, they entered into the promised land according to what God said, and their tomorrow was full of the promises of God. They left their yesterday... They forgot about today, and they went to tomorrow. And friends, that's what we need, we need to do today. God has called each one of us as believers, as followers of Christ. You know, it's even, even today the word Christian. Even today the word Christian, we, we, cannot, we cannot use the word Christian like we grew up knowing Christians. Because today everyone's a Christian, especially at election time. Every politician becomes a Christian at election time. We have to change that to Christ followers. And that's, I mean, that's why I see it. I, I call it Christ following, following Christ, living like Christ lived. And, and, and sometimes we'll talk about separation from the world. Let's just talk about what would Christ do? There used to be a little armband we wore. Uh, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? And we need to... I think sometimes we need to go back to that. God has called each of us as believers, as followers of Christ, to make the same kind of commitment to him. God has promised to lead us into our tomorrow and never forsake us. Our preparation today for tomorrow involves consecrating ourselves to God and following God wherever he leads us without fear, worry, or doubt. You can have a tomorrow. Your tomorrow is waiting for you. Don't throw it away. Don't throw it away. Broken, confused, struggling, not only with yesterday, but with today. Jesus said, come unto me, and I will not cast you aside. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Give an opportunity to God. Let God show you what he can do. I want to just challenge you with that. Leave that thought with you in conclusion, in conclusion. Let God show you what he can do. Don't give up on God. And don't fear to take a step of faith. When I heard Heather's testimony and talked to her and, and, uh, and hear what she has done and 
ministry, how God has used her. And one of the things he says, we just got to obey. We just got to do what God tells us. And you know, that's exactly right. But how many of us sometimes have that boldness and that faith to just do what God tells us? And it's always great to have someone like Heather come and testify and encourage us. God told me and I did it. And this is where I'm at. That's just what we got to do. I like that. I like that. And then the man who testified last night, was his name George? Yeah. He says, if you don't know what to do, Jesus has the answer. If you don't know where to go, Jesus is the way. Just an answer for everything. So thank you for letting me share that with you tonight. Uh, I hope it was encouraging, inspiration to you. To know about your tomorrow. Don't throw away your tomorrow. Trust God. Look for tomorrow. You're not too young to live for tomorrow. You're not too old to live for tomorrow. You're not finished to live for tomorrow. You still got tomorrow. And as long as you got tomorrow, we got something to do. Amen? Father, I thank you, God, for this time and for this lovely church and wonderful group of people who have been patient and kind to let me share my heart. And I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will take what was Dennis Tanner and just eliminate it, but what comes from you, God, and apply it to each of our hearts. And let us be encouraged and inspired through your word. And looking for our tomorrow. Let us not trade in tomorrow for yesterday. And God, don't let us miss tomorrow because of today. Let us keep our eyes focused on tomorrow. What you can do and what you will do. We ask you, God, to go with us. Protect us. Watch over us. Thank you for Jim and Eileen for their vision and burden for this church. For the I Lead ministry, for the Mali Alam Church that is meeting here in the mornings, for this lighthouse that's going to be in this community, a light directing people to your salvation. I pray, God, that you'll cause this church to prosper. You'll cause it to grow and bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here. Jimmy.